Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from Grand House Funhouse and welcome to my latest collection update video. In this one, I'll cover the sweet cinematic goodies I've either purchased or received in the last two months. I uh, hope you're all fine and dandy and that your uh, Christmas and New Year celebrations were A-OK, -okay. even though you might not have been in the mood to uh, celebrate much of anything this holiday season. I did get some uh, great gifts uh, I'll show at the end of the video. So uh, that made it work well for me, uh, <laughs> at least. I'm rocking the four essentials in this update, VHS, DVDs, Blu-rays, and vinyl soundtracks, and a few miscellaneous items I've acquired as well. So uh, let's start with VHSs. A few times a year, I'll post my VHS want list to the VHS Facebook group I'm on, and usually I'll get a bite or two, and I just got these in this week from a said want list posting. So first up is uh, Deadly Illusion which is uh, a Larry Cohen joint. Um, came out in 1987, starring Billy Dee Williams and his mustache with uh, Vanity in there as well, and uh, Morgan Fairchild, of all people. Um, I have yet to see this one. Uh, all I know is that uh, he halfway uh, directed this movie and then someone else came in, uh, William Tannen, uh, I believe his name is. And uh, yeah, apparently there was a little trouble on the set. It seems like a, a detective, uh, a hard-boiled detective goes uptown, murder and mayhem, follow him in deadly illusion. So there, that's what I'm waiting to, to get to see. And then, uh, to make this sale worthwhile, because the shipping was just uh, crazy expensive, uh, I, I blind bought something, and it is uh, <laughs> T-Bone and Weasel, which uh, stars uh, Gregory Hines and Christopher Lloyd. And uh, this aired on TNT back in uh, 1992, so it's a TV movie. So basically, this is a, a, a from what I gather from the trailer, this is a, a road movie and a comedy. So uh, hopefully, uh, it will be worth the dollars I spent on this, all the yucks I'll be getting from this. Uh, but it's so rare that I see Christopher Lloyd in comedies that, uh, you know, why not uh, try it out, see what happened? And I'm hoping I'll get. Uh, a good results from this. So there you go. Uh, on to DVDs now. I got three DVDs, but I'm only going to show you two. The third one, I'm working on a, a review of it right now, and I want to keep it uh, mysterious for now. First DVD is uh, They Came to Rob Las Vegas. It's a 1968 heist movie where uh, they hatch a scheme to rob a high-tech truck containing $7 million in Las Vegas, and that's high-tech for like 1968. Um, this was shot by a Spaniard, uh, his name is Antonio Isassi, it has a Eurocrime feel to it, even though it's set in America, but it's shot in Spain, uh, that's why I added it to my Polizio Teschi Eurocrime movie database playlist, uh, because of that, it feels almost like it's a, a proto uh, Polizio Teschi Eurocrime movie, uh, this was released by Warner Archive, so possibly we'll get a Blu-ray at some point. So, uh, yeah, it has a, a great cast too, man. It's uh, Jack Palance, isn't this? Uh, you got uh, Gary Lockwood, L.K. Summer, L uh, Lee J. Cobb. So, yeah, it's, uh, if you're into, like, um, heist movies from the 60s, very much uh, worth checking out. And then I got this uh, 90s action movie, Gunman, which came out in 1994. It stars uh, Christopher Lambert, uh, Mario Van Peeble. There's Kadeem Hardison in this. Uh, Dennis Leary, uh, Patrick Stewart, who played bad guys in this. Uh, Patrick Stewart is like the head, le the head leader of the, the bad guys. Uh, he's really good at it, too. A real prick. <laughs> and then uh, Dennis Leary, who was in a mode of playing bad guys, uh, Judgment Night, in 1994. Um, I don't know. This is a pen and scan format, so if you are interested in seeing this, I would not get this DVD. There's an HD uh, transfer online that I found out right after I watched this. I almost wish I had watched the uh, HD transfer, but uh, I had heard so many good things about this, and you know what? It was just a okay. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's just it's just fine. It's just a fine, just a fine movie. So there you go. That is it for DVDs, and uh, now on to Blu-rays. So basically, I'm gonna show you two of my Black Friday hauls that I got. Uh, one is from Vinegar Syndrome. Which I got on the 23rd of December, and then my Dark Force Entertainment Hall, which I ordered on uh, November 26th and got on January 15th, seven long weeks of waiting. 
and I'm still waiting on other orders uh, from last month. So yeah, patience is the name of the game, uh, especially now. Uh, I'll start with my Vinegar Syndrome haul. Now, most of these I have yet to watch and some were blind buys because I always like to be uh, you know, pleasantly surprised when I pop in a blind buy and turns out it's uh, actually pretty damn good. It does happen, not often, but it does. Uh, so uh, first up, I will show you Psychic Killer right here. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, slip cover. I think it's my favorite now from uh, uh, Vinegar Syndrome. And uh, they actually made it specifically for this Black Friday sale because uh, this did not have one beforehand. So yeah, uh, there you go with uh, Psychic Killer. I can't tell you much about it because uh, I've yet to see it. And I'll be honest, it's the, it's the slip cover that got me on this one. <laughs> so there you go. Up next is a, a killer doll movie. It's a Dolly Dearest right here. Again, amazing slip cover. You can look at right here. So basically in the vein of, uh, you know, the Child's Play movie, Chucky and all that good stuff. Uh, again, this is one of those where I've yet to see it. Can't wait to, to check it out. I am a fan of, you know, killer doll movies. Who isn't, you know? Up next, uh, that I've seen, and it's a hell of a movie. It is uh, Action USA, and it's so good that I actually uh, did a review of it. I'll uh, post the link of it down below if you haven't yet to see it. Again, another great uh, slip cover. This is a VSA, a VSA uh, title, and uh, I got, uh, what is it, uh, 464 out of uh, 4,000. I don't know if you can see it right here too close anyway so yeah it's uh what else, else can i say about the movie i've said everything of it in the uh review so uh, go check it out it's really really good and then the other big uh release on black friday the that it came out on black friday was fade to black right here starring uh christopher what's his name again it is uh christopher 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 dennis christopher there you go so yeah, it's about a, um, a fan of movies that uh, it's a bit, he's a bit uh, deranged in the head. And uh, the, that's the whole plot of the movie, sort of. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to uh, check it out as well. So there you go, Fade to Black. And then uh, I got uh, another VSA archive title and it is Savage Dawn right here. You can see again, the beautiful slip cover. This was uh, 2246 out of 4,000. So uh, yay me, I guess. <laughs> but uh, this is a, a biker movie. And uh, it has a crazy cast of all like uh, character actors of action movies in the 80s. And uh, we have like uh, Lance Henriksen, George Kennedy, uh, Karen Black is in this, Richard Lynch. Um, I think it's, a, it's a very much worth uh, checking out. And I'm actually gonna do a review of it pretty pretty soon so there you go savage dawn right here and then uh, another blind buy the caller right here starring uh, Ma malcolm mcdowell and madeline smith look at this gorgeous gorgeous cover right here and then try to get it out of there and it is uh uh yeah Executive producer Charles Band, so okay, that's uh, that's cool. It's an Empire Picture movie. Again, another blind buy. Can't tell you much about it, uh, but the cast intrigued me. And uh, from what I remember, I read good reviews online before I bought it. So there you go, right here. And then uh, we have Perfect Stranger, which is the second Larry Cohen movie in this uh, collection update. I think I'm. I think I'm missing maybe one or two and I have the entire filmography. So I'm very happy about that because as you know, I am a big uh, Larry Cohen fan. So there you go, right here, Perfect Stranger. And then I bought my first ACFA title and uh, very happy about it. This was on my uh, want list forever. ACFA being the American Jean Film Archive, which is uh, set up in Austin, Texas. They have a connection with the uh, Alamo Draft House. And it is The Sword and the Claw which is a Turkish movie. Um, they usually are really out there, those kind of movies. And, uh, and it, you know, cheap, cheaply made and uh, so bad they're good kind of thing. And this one, I've uh, been, dying, been dying to see it and uh, can't wait to, to do so. 
All right, up next will be my Dark Force Entertainment Hall. So on to my Dark Force Entertainment Hall, which had the, the best Black Friday sale uh, price-wise. And a lot of those uh, titles I'm going to show you were on my want list. And uh, I got to knock them off. I always like Dark Force's output, even when they went through some, um, you know, questionable online antics, which I feel they've got themselves in check in the last year. And it seems uh, so, so good on them. One of my earliest videos was an unboxing that I did of uh, a Dark Force haul back in uh, June 2018. And I will link it up in the description below. But those were Code Red titles. This time around, I actually got four Blu-rays released by Dark Force. And uh, the first one being Kill or Be Killed, which is a South African Kung Fu movie starring uh, James Ryan. And uh, yeah, so there you go right here. And this is number two in their line right here, Kill or Be Killed. And actually, uh, Scorpion releasing released the, the sequel, Kill or Kill, was it uh, Kill and Kill Again right here? So you can get both. Uh, yeah, you can purchase both. Up next, I got the double feature, the Black Dragon and uh, Enforcer from Death Row, right here. Uh, Black Dragon starring Ron Van Cleef. And uh, I actually did a review of this one, and this is the video I'll be uh, uploading right after this one. So there you go. And uh, I think they're re-releasing this one. I don't know why, but uh, next in a week or two, because this came out last July, but I saw online there's a, another version maybe of this. I'm not too, it's not too clear on what it is, but uh, yeah, very much worth checking out. Then I got uh, <laughs> the giant spider invasion, which is, uh, well, it's, it says it right there in the title. Uh, it looks so fun. I love those creature features and um, this one looks very cheaply made, but yet oh so fun. So there you go, the giant spider invasion. Uh, then I got a Politio Teschi starring Yul Brenner in his last movie that he did before his death, uh, which is called Death Rage right here. And he plays an assassin that's uh, sort of like mentoring a, a younger version of himself. And uh, yeah, right here. It's pretty boring. I'll, I'll like, uh, I, I paid the, I don't know, it was okay. You know, his bald head was awesome. <laughs> for your Brenner, but uh, it was just it was just okay. It was not the best Pulitio Teschi I've seen in my life. And finally, from uh, the Dark Force title, I got Yeti, Giant of the 20th Century, and I even got the slipcover with it. Look at this thing right here. Uh, this was shot in Toronto, Canada, of all places. It is a, an Italian shot movie. Uh, it stars Anton Antonella Intelligenzi, John Stacy, Tony Kendall, and Mimo Krau playing the Yeti in his one and only screen performance. And uh, man, he gave his all, man. It's, it's just uh, <laughs> just amazing. The the special effects in this one are, are, are just great. Uh, there's a really weird sexual tension between the Yeti and um, Antonella Intelligenzi. I'm butchering her name. It's really awful. There's a scene where literally uh, the Yeti's nipple gets erect. That's right. They they spent money on creating an effect for an erect nipple for a Yeti in a 1977 movie. So yeah, uh, it is it is one of those. It's so bad it's good, and it's very much worth checking out if you get a chance to buy from Dark Force. I would highly <laughs> highly recommend this one. And then I got a few uh, Code Red titles. First one being Zombie Nightmare, which, uh, who does it star in? It stars uh, Adam West, there's Tia Career, there's um, another dude, I can't remember his name, but uh, he directs, uh, he directed uh, a few uh, Jim Carrey movies and uh, the um, Stranger Things series. He's uh, an executive, executive producer on it and uh, um, director. And uh, this was shot in Montreal, so there's a big reason why I bought this, because I'm kind of curious where they shot it, and I want to see uh, all, all that good stuff. Uh, this came out in 1986, and uh, it looks craptacular, and I uh, cannot wait to check it out right here. Zombie Nightmare. And then uh, I got uh, an 80s um, kids stuck in a jungle somewhere. They need to be rescued movie. It's out of control right here, starring uh, Betsy Russell, Martin Hewitt, and uh, Claudia Joy, or Uday, there you go. 
And uh, I, love, I love those like kids in peril movies and uh, they must, you know, <clears throat> escape from a, a dire situation. This looks like uh, one of those movies. So there you go, out of control. And then I got Steel Arena. One of the first movies from uh, Mark L. Lester. If you don't know who Mark L. Lester is, he did uh, Class of 84. He did Commando. So uh, this is about a derby. You know, it's a daredevil uh, circuit. It's all about cars exploding and uh, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, I got Steel Arena. And then that was the hot title, I think like a year or two ago, like an anthology movie, Screams of a Winter Night. I remember when this was getting, uh, it was very sold out. It was very sought after. And I, I, now I just bought it for like 15 bucks. So there you go. See how, how scarce it was back then. And now I can just get it for very cheap. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of anthology horror movies. And uh, this one looks uh, A-OK. -okay. So uh, we'll see if it is. We'll see if it, uh, Screams of a Winter Night is A-OK. -okay. So there you go. That is it for my Blu-rays or the Blu-rays and now to the vinyl soundtracks. Believe it or not, no vinyl soundtracks were purchased from yours truly last month. There were slim pickings from my favorite record store here in Montreal, Le Grand Trois Tour, on their weekly drop of new arrivals posted on their website and I started to get uh, the shakes. I needed my fix, but they more than made up for it this month. Uh, oh man, just last Saturday alone, I got my hands on six various Saraband vinyls. And you know how much I love my Varese Saraband. In fact, I'm going to keep those for a video coming out soon about that sweet soundtrack label and all the vinyls I have in my collections so far. I cannot wait to uh, work on that one. Uh, the rest I got lots of blind buys movie wise, as in I didn't know these movies existed, but I bought them because of who was the composers behind them. And you'll agree with me. These were good blind buys. So uh, first up, I got uh, a fish called Wanda, or uh, in French, uh, a poisson nommé Wanda. There's even the, the, <laughs> the German title on this one. Um, I've seen this movie so long ago, I barely remember anything from it. it, it the music is composed by John Duprez, right here, and guitar soloist John Williams. So that, uh, that made me bought this uh, right quick. So there you go, a uh, fish called Wanda. Then I got a various artiste soundtrack, and it is The Color of Money, Martin Scorsese, Paul Newman, Tom Cruise, and the very beautiful Mary Elizabeth Manstantonio. You know, Pool Hustling, the, the sequel to... Fuck, man, what's the first one? I'll put the title right here because I, I really forgot about it. So artists featured on this is Don Hanley, Robert Palmer, Eric Clapton, Mark Knopfler, Willie Dixon, B.B. King, Warren Zemon. So there you go, the color of money. And then I'm getting ever closer to getting all the uh, soundtracks for the John Hughes filmography. Um, I'm missing just a few and some that were never released on vinyl. It's like uh, Ferris Bueller. But I did get Pretty in Pink for $3. So there you go. Uh, you know, you got the 80s classic like If You Leave from uh, OMD. Uh, you got uh, In Excess on this one, New Order, uh, Echo and the Bunny Man, The Smiths. So uh, yeah, there you go, Pretty in Pink. Then I got another Various Artistes soundtrack, Earth Girls Are Easy. This is the uh, Gina Davis, uh, uh, Jim Carrey, Damon Williams, and Jeff Goldblum. That's the name I was looking for, directed by Julian Temple. Another very 80s movie. Uh, we got the B-52s on this. Daryl, we got Hall and Oates. Uh, who else we have? Niles Rogers in this one. Uh, Jill Jones. Uh, yeah, Depeche Mode with Route 66. So yeah, Hurt Girls are easy. This is one of the blind buys I was uh, telling you about. It is Cinderella Liberty. I have no idea what the movie is about. I have yet to check out the uh, trailer. Apparently stars Jace, uh, James Caan, Marsha Mason, and Eli Wallach. Uh, picked it up for John Williams right here. One of his earlier earliest effort as a, a score composer right here. Then this is, uh, uh, <laughs> this is a soundtrack I wanted to buy is for the stuntman. That's why it was, they, they were showing the artwork of the stuntman on the website. So I didn't read the title next to it. 
But apparently they made a mistake because the stuntman turned into an unmarried woman. <laughs> I don't know. So obviously, you know, for $3, I kept it. I didn't turn it back. Um, this is a Paul Mazursky movie uh, with Jill Claiborne, this and uh, Alan Bates, Michael Murphy. Uh, the music is by Bill Conti, Conti, him who did all the Rocky movies back in the 80s. So yeah, I, I kept it and I like the, the cover. It's very, like it's it kind of has a, a swirl circle-y kind of thing to the touch. It, it's very nice, it's very nice. And then I got uh, some early work from Jerry Goldsmith in The Last Run. This is a George C. Scott movie, uh, and uh, yeah, George C. Scott, and it's uh, it has a very 60s feel to it, obviously, even though it came out in 1971, and uh, this is another one of those movies I've yet to see, but uh, it looks very interesting. The soundtrack was really, really good, so I'm glad I got, uh, I blind bought this. Another blind buy. Um, did you know they did a Lone Ranger movie in the early 80s? And it was called The Legend of the Lone Ranger. And uh, music by uh, John Barry, <clears throat> who's one of my favorite composers. So uh, very much worth uh, picking up right here. The Lone Rangers. Another 80s, I want to say classic. I, I know of, of it, but I've never actually uh, watched it. It is Lady Hawk. Lady Hawk, directed by Richard Donner and uh, starring... Uh, Matthew Broderick, Rodger Hauer, Michelle Pfeiffer. Is this the movie he did right after Ferris Bueller? Oh, I think he did this one before. This is 85. Ferris, I believe, is 86. So, yeah. Lady Hawk right here. And then I got uh, some more John Williams <clears throat> with the Iger Sanction. Uh, Clint Eastwood, who plays like a, an, a, um, a hitman. This is, and it, it all happens like in the mountains. This is pretty much like uh, cl uh, cliffhangers. This was before uh, 1983's Cliffhanger with uh, Stephen Stallone. There was the Iger Sanction and uh, George Kennedy's in this as well. Vanetta McGee. Oh yeah, Vanetta McGee. And uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, I know that Kino Lorber released this one on Blu-ray and I just added it to my want list because uh, it looks very, very interesting. So there you go. And the last vinyl I got for this collection update, it is Days of Heaven right here it's uh, Ennio Morricone that uh, does uh, this thing and uh, actually the best tracks on this one are from a, another composer called Enderlin oh he's called Leo Cuttle Cut I don't know how to say it uh, the track Enderlin it's so beautiful you you could hear it in the uh, the trailer I thought it was Ennio but it's actually some other guy Ennio those mo most mo more of the like the folksy stuff in there, like the most like banjo-y kind of like uh, southern music in this. And this one stars um, uh, Richard Gere. There's Brooke Adams. It's Terrence Malick. If you know Terrence Malick, he does these kind of movies, like these uh, ethereal kind of like uh, movies like this. So yeah, there you go. Days of Heaven, and that is it for the vinyl soundtracks. And finally, the part of the video where I'll show the uh, miscellaneous cinematic goodies I've either bought or received as gifts. Uh, first up will be the t-shirts. I got right here the uh, Civic TV, which is the uh, fictional TV station in Videodrome. Uh, I always love the design of, of this and uh, I got to find a t-shirt of it, or I should say I got it as a gift. Uh, the other t-shirt I got is for the, uh, you can see it right here. The Lad Company, and The Lad Company is the production company that did uh, Blade Runner. And again, that's another design I really, really love. So I put it on my uh, Christmas gifts, gift wish list. Uh, also, something else that uh, was a total surprise to me, I didn't know I was going to get, is a popcorn machine. Uh, the, the old school popcorn machine. I always wanted to one like the big ones where you could like roll in. But the one I got was uh, much smaller, and I'll put right here, because I can bring it here, because it's, it's a big, big, but not that big. I'll put it here. Uh, it's just perfect, uh, and I love the look of it. Uh, for upcoming movie nights, I'll be like the the, <laughs> the, pork, the popcorn wrangler. I'll be one doing it. And um, with it, I bought this shit where I'm sure if you're a popcorn lover, and if you want your popcorn to taste exactly like in the movie theaters, you must get yourself the Flavacol right here. And 
you have to mix it up with the coconut oil right here. So those two, those two things will make your popcorn taste exactly like in the movie theaters. And I've had a few now, a few batches, and it's uh, uncanny. It is the same. It costs so much less for a per, uh, you know, probably like 80 cents worth of every time you do like a popcorn batch. So yeah, definitely get these two things right here if you uh, want to do it up in style. Like in movie theaters, uh, I also got, uh, you know, I, I wanted to like um, sample my own merch because I, I opened up a store, etsy.com slash shop slash greenhouse funhouse. Uh, you got to sample your own stash. And this came out exactly the way I wanted it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is the cup. I had to get the cup, the greenhouse funhouse cup right here. So I've been drinking all my teas. <laughs> <laughs> this one and uh, I really love the design I did uh, not, not to toot my own horn but uh, the, the 42nd Street uh, mural I did as a t-shirt I want to do it as well as a, a poster so I did it right here it looks fantastic I can't wait to uh, you know laminate it and uh, the other thing left to show you is uh, Fangoria and uh, yesterday I received the latest Fangoria issue. I haven't even had have time to look through it. So uh, let's do it together, shall we? So uh, this is the one with uh, Psycho Gorman on the cover, which uh, came out uh, last Friday, I believe. I've yet to see. It's in my queue. My queue. I can't wait to check it out. There's also, uh, they're talking about uh, Honeydew. There's uh, the legendary vinyl right here. I guess it's the makeup... Uh, was the makeup person on um, Beetlejuice. Well, let's see what else is there there. We have, uh, they go on the vigil set visit. They're interviewing Jesse Blanchard. I don't know who that is. Uh, there's a conversation with Prom Night 2 and 3's Ron Holliver. Uh, talk about Godzilla. There's uh, a found footage, Second Surge, apparently. I didn't know about this one. Uh, that time, O.J. Simpson almost starred in Dawn of the Dead. What? So yeah, let's see uh, right here. You can see, just flipping through it a little bit. So yeah, I'm up to uh, issue number two of my second subscription. And uh, now apparently you could buy them at Barnes and Nobles. So uh, you probably get them even cheaper at Barnes and Nobles than me paying the price I paid just to get them delivered to my house. But yeah, that's uh, I can't wait to you know peruse it at my own ledger. So there you go, the latest finger uh, issue, volume 10, number 10. So that is it for my January 2021 VHS DVD Blu-ray collection update. Please like, share, and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, Reddit, and on Facebook. In the comment section below, let me know about your latest purchases or uh, anything else that went through your mind as I made you watch all the things I spent money on in the last few months. That's all I do now, purchase and consume cinema. The one uh, tiny upside from all the curfews and confinements we've been going through here in the last 10 months. Although I am more than ready to go back to my normal life again. However normal it was before this shit show started. I'm sure you are too. And on that cheery note, <laughs> thank you for watching. And I shall say to you, ciao bye for now.